Hello everyone, this is Jeff Chrysler of Right Way Heritage Trimming and a Detail Enthusiast. I'm here to talk to you today about these early MGB Mark I seats and the process of reproducing them accurately. To start off, here are some detailed pics of some originals that I used to create my patterns and trimming techniques. As you can see, they were mostly leather with vinyl and carpet used on the backs and of course contrasting vinyl piping. The backrest covers were backed with half-inch foam from the factory, which gave the covers a slightly puffy look. The foams consisted of a molded latex cushion and an inch and a half thick backrest foam with thin wadding wrapped around the back and sides. While the backrest covers were never glued down, the cushions had the center pleated sections glued to the foams with hand-stitched reinforcements added to the front corners of the pleated sections that secured it to the lower rubber diaphragms. To start off, I laid out and cut all of my leather pieces using the patterns I'd made from the original, making sure to mark and avoid any scars or marks in the hide, and arranging the patterns to get the best yield possible. Here you can see I hand make all of the piping. So I got a nice spool of 3 16 piping welt core, and I cut the strips of vinyl that I'm going to be making it out of. Here's the cream color that I used for the MGB. And I just fold this over and then run a stitch through it. Voila, there's your piping. I'll show you what I've done so far. So I've sewn up the various components for the seat. You've got the front of the backrest. These are the carpet and vinyl back of the backrest. Of course, this is all leather with the vinyl piping. Um, here's the cushion faces, all sewn up nicely. Again, I've backed them with foam just so that they get a nice smooth look when you trim them. This is the cushion skirts that I now have to sew around the perimeter here, and they're handed left and right. Uh, the inside, they did it in two panels. Here's the other back. And of course, this is the skirt that joins the back and the front of the backrest, so that'll sew onto there. And you can see with all of these patterns, you've always got a make a series of lineup marks so that it joins up in the correct spot. So here's lineup mark here that joins up to that's the center line right there. So when I do these, I make them up, line up the lineup mark, and use my trusty stapler. These, these staplers are invaluable for trimmers who are, or for upholsters who are making up covers like this because see that one goes with the piping. Um, I usually like to just grab my scissors here. When you're floating over a seam like that, you want to lessen that seam as much as possible so that you're not going to have a bunch of gather. You can see I do that and trim off the edge of the piping. Just like that. Now with a lot of these pipings, I actually core out the center, so again, so it doesn't create a lump, so these things can pass over each other. Whenever you're joining piping like that, it's a good thing to do, so I'm going to go ahead and do that to those pieces of piping as well. So here you can see I've been, I'm starting to join up the backrest skirt with the front face first, and of course I'm following lineup marks that are in my patterns that I had created so that you can make sure it all lines up exactly where it's supposed to go. And this follows down here and comes right out to the end. There's that guy. Go 
goes right out to the end. Right there. So now this is ready to sew. You can see I've got my little sewing gauge here. I like to weave almost, well not quite an eighth. Um, see, if I was right up against the shoulder here like that, that would be a standard 3 8 seam allowance. Um, but I like to do a little bit more when I'm sewing with piping um, because I want it to be nice and tight around the piping. I don't want to be able to look in and see the stitching, you know. These are nice and tight there, you know. So, get this started. I normally do a uh, start stitch there, but because I'll probably do, be doing two passes with this, I didn't do it here. Now we can inspect and make sure we got nice tight seams. We don't want to be able to see any stitching in there. We want these to be nice and tight. And these are looking really good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Very nice. Nice tight seams, that's what you want to see. All right, now I can go line up and set, set up the uh, other one. Obviously, you wanna make these inside out so that the seams are all pointed out. And then once it's all sewn together, you pull it out. So now that it's all sewn, I gotta go back and make sure I remove all of the staples I used for lining up. Just the final thing to finish it off. Okay, so now we can fold it right side out. Uh, take care when doing this. You don't want to pull against the uh, open seams here. Just kind of protect them as you're turning it around. will pull out once it's pulled onto the seat and stretched out. So there's the pair of backrests finished and ready to go. Now I can get into these cushions. So after the covers were all completed I set about trimming them to the seats. 
In this case, I decided to reuse the original foams as they were still in really great shape, but I've also used new ones as well. The backrest covers just pull over and are secured with staples along the bottom edge, while the cushion covers are glued in place and then the skirts are pulled around and clipped to the frame rails with these special little C-clips. And there you have it, some beautifully finished leather MGB seats made exactly as original. If you like what you see and you'd like some for your MG, I'd be happy to make you some in any color you like. Just contact me through my website, brightwayheritagetrim.com. Until next time, I'm Jeff Chrysler.